Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I have the skeleton chassis so that it's it's not 100% done, but it's probably 80% done. The the cab area aside from the posts that go right here, the cab area and the rear engine cage area is done. I haven't done the any of the front yet, but there's really not a lot to that. Uh, one thing that I want to know, what I'm, what I'm doing in this video, I'm not showing you any fabrication or anything like that. I'm walking you around the skeleton chassis. This is the chassis that lately I've been showing you that uh, is my most up-to-date design. This design is not the final product. It does not have, it really has hardly any cross bracing. Um, like this chassis right here, you wouldn't drive. This does not have the strength in place really for anything. This skeleton chassis is just what I drew up so that I can get a, a rough idea of what the chassis is going to look like. Now moving forward, once I get the front end on, I'm probably going to start transitioning to what I was just calling the version 3 chassis, which is the skeleton chassis, but it's got all of the triangulation and all of the cross bracing. It's got cross bracing up on the roof. It's got cross bracing back on the hoop here. Um, but a lot of that is dependent upon like installing the engine and the transaxle because I know there's some things that I didn't design in here yet like where the upper A-arms are going to connect to, where the shock absorbers are going to connect to. I know that I'm still going to have more structure up here. I didn't design that yet because I actually want to have the transaxle and the engine sitting in here when I design those and whatnot. But what I'm getting at is this is just a skeleton chassis. So if, if you look at this right now, you'll see a lot of things that don't make any sense because they wouldn't have any strength to them whatsoever. Um, but with this chassis, it's not the finished product. It is going to have cross bracing, so just disregard some of that for now. What I have, which is cool, is I've got most of the skeleton chassis built. So I've got the one-piece front end sitting on here. I've got my driver's seat sitting in here. I've climbed in and out a couple times, which is not easy. I'm supposed to, with my design, I'm supposed to have a little piece that goes right here, which I'm pretty sure I'll put that in there, but I gotta say, Climbing in and out of this thing is really difficult and it's going to be a lot more difficult when that little piece is in there. Um, but it's really hard to tell right now how difficult or easy it's going to be climbing in here because right now this seat is not installed so I can't, I have to be real careful climbing in here. The chassis is pretty high off the ground and the, the final chassis will have a little step here. Right now the step's not here so, but it is difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult to climb into but so a couple things that I noticed, um, which I think I'm okay with, but it's taking a little bit to get used to. Um, the front windshield, number one, is, is pretty big. Number two, the way I designed it, it's almost perfectly straight up and down. It has a little bit of a tilt inward. And I do and I don't like that. I do like that because it gives me a lot, it will give me a lot of clearance out to the side which on the tight trails that I ride on right now with the uh, Baja bug the way the windshield kind of curves around like this um, I'm real restricted on the side visibility like when I'm driving I find myself leaning forward a lot so that I can see more out the sides of the windows so I think that'll be good um, but it's a little bit it takes a little getting used to because right now it seems very very large I also have this bar up here, however when I do actually do my window installation I'm going to need some other sort of bar down here. I mean I want this bar up here to mount my roof to, but I might have to have another bar across here for the windshield. So I didn't, not, I didn't really consider that on the initial design. Another thing that I can't, I can't really tell yet, but I designed the forward area here bigger it's um it's not any longer but it's like three or four inches wider this way and still with the seat in here when i'm sitting in here it seems like i'm a little restricted on pedals when i was originally building this chassis i felt like it was humongous i felt like it was just way bigger than the baja bug and it is there's more room in here but now that i have the seat in here 
Um, there's not, a, not as much room as I thought. The seats are still going to be close together and I'm still going to be, I will technically have a little bit more room in the foot pedal area, but it's still going to be pretty tight. I haven't done anything for support in the roof area yet. I'm kind of thinking about just putting two triangulated pieces in there. However, I was also considering a hatch that I could open up on the top here. Um, I'll probably draw a couple things up in Bentec and see what looks like a good compromise between strength and room for a hatch. I mean, I want it to be really strong, so if I have to just put triangulated pieces up in there, I will, but if I could make it so that there's a hatch, number one, it would give me another way to get out of the vehicle, but number two, during the summer, I would make the hatch removable, so it would be like having a huge sunroof. So I'm not... Not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Like I said, the uh, I thought I'd have more room off to the side here because I think I added like three more inches, but somehow it's still coming up a little cramped in this area. Maybe I've got the seat a little too far out right now, but I don't know. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. It's got good dash area. I set my... Uh, the original bug up with me sitting really far back from the dash and this will be the exact same way so i'll have the dash up here plenty of room for the steering wheel and it'll it'll kind of come out towards me a little bit and then all the dash stuff will really be like an arm's reach away which i just like that i'm more comfortable with that and so that's how i'm setting this one up as well i think roof height is actually pretty good it feels like i've got probably about four five maybe six inches which will be good because that gives me room to run a couple of bars up here and it also gives me room so that if i'm wearing a helmet the helmet probably takes up another two two and a half inches so i'll you know i need to have some room up there so i'm not banging my head on the on the roof so that part actually came out pretty well when i designed that because the volkswagen bug body is curved i just took the highest point and the lowest point and I split the difference that's how I came up with the elevation for this roof and I can also move this uh, I can adjust the seat a little bit I haven't made mounts for the seat yet but um, when I do they'll be similar to the mounts that I had in the other bug and those had some adjustability both forwards backwards and a little bit up and down so this one will have the same thing so if I need to trim this a little bit I will but as far as the design goes I'm, I'm happy with the elevation that I got here uh, so one area that's working out pretty good is back here. I do have a little triangulated bars going in here. This is going to be the fuel cell area. And there's going to be some paneling here. And then there's going to be paneling going across the top here. So the fuel cell's sitting back here. I think there's going to be two, one on either side, so that my shifter and electrical wiring and whatnot can go right through the middle. But the fuel cells will actually be not in the cabin with the driver and passenger, so I'm pretty pretty stoked about that. And then these two bars back here are going to be for the radiator. Somewhere, somewhere right around here, there will be some structure, and this bar might get removed. There will be some structure for the rear shock absorbers. And then somewhere around here, the radiator will be installed, and hopefully the radiator can be down low enough so that um, from the driver looking out the rear view mirror, I'll be able to see over it and have some rear visibility. And I have, I actually have tons of room here. The opening here is humongous compared to my radiator, so I'll, I do have some room to play around there. But it's going to depend on how the shock absorber mounts come out. I do have this bar here that kind of triangulates the rear engine hoop with the corner of the chassis. Um, this bar might be in trouble of interfering with the, the rear A-arm suspension. I have the, the lower control arm, and that's fine. I'm not worried about that. But I've got the upper link, and just from looking at this here and taking a couple of quick measurements off of the other, my bug chassis, this that upper link might come into contact with this um, it's obviously it's one of those things that i'll just put the suspension on here and i'll see how it looks but i have a feeling that this is going to be a problem here i've got my engine section 
Like I showed you in the past video, I raised this up three inches from the engine cage on the other chassis. I did allow um, enough room for the Ecotec in here. There's a couple of inches extra. So like taking off the valve covers and whatnot should be a thousand times easier than doing it in the chassis right now. There's zero provisions on here yet to remove this cage. What my plan is, put the engine and the transaxle in here, actually fabricate my motor mounts so that everything's permanent. Once I do that, I'll be running some triangulated pieces around here. And like I said earlier, building a little bit of a substructure in here for all of that to hang on to. Once I have all those done, then I'll take a look at the rear cage and see where I can cut it and install some couplers so that I can take the rear cage off and then pull the Ecotec or whatever engine I have right out the back. The next thing that I'm going to do right off the bat is make some seat mounts so that I can actually mount my seats in there and actually climb around in there and see what kind of room I have. Then I'm going to mount the front, the, the structure for the front suspension and then probably mount the front, the, the one piece front end. To be honest with you, once I think I'm at that point, I'll do a couple of Baja runs with the, the Volkswagen Baja, but I think at that point, it'll be time to tear that one down and start dragging the parts over and installing it on this chassis. So that's gonna be tough because I'm tearing that one apart. Now that I have it up and running is going to be difficult, but it's all, it's all part of the project. Anyways, this is what it is. Remember this design and as I'm design as I'm building it with the design, I'm making some tweaks um, now that I've seen it in the real world. But remember when I'm done with this, um, I'm you know, as far as the drawings and the prints for it, those are free. So if you guys wanna have the drawings when I'm done to make one or just for reference or whatever, that's gonna be free to anybody. Um, so if you guys see this and you have some some tips or some ideas for me regarding it anything with the suspension or how I'm going to install the engine or the windshield or the body panels that I'm going to make. I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking, and I've never done this before, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve or an adventure or an epic failure. I don't know. I think I'm going to try to make the body panels and the roof panels and all that out of fiberglass so that I can give them you know, some radius edges and some molding and whatnot to make them kind of kind of cool because I want them to, I don't want it just to look like a race buggy with aluminum paneling. I want it to look, I want it to look kind of special, really nice. So anyways, if you guys have any comments, please let me know because I, as I make progress, like I've gotten a couple of comments or a couple of tips that I couldn't do because it's too late. So check it out, let me know. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.